Once every fortnight, the world's largest liner, the 83,000-ton Queen Elizabeth, slips into Southampton docks from New York. 48 hours later, she must sail again with over 2,000 passengers who've come to expect that they can order almost anything and get it. Within an hour of docking, the arrival passengers and their 7,000 pieces of luggage are ashore, and work has begun to prepare the ship for the next crossing. For the crew of 1300, this is the turnaround. Painting parts of the ship which can't be done at sea. Scrubbing decks. While alongside, the oilers have already started pumping 4,000 tons of fuel oil aboard. The biggest job of the turnaround is below decks, the catering. For the Queen Elizabeth, like any home or family, has to be shopped for. And the job that every housewife knows is done on a mammoth scale. Before arriving, the chief steward and his departmental heads work out what they'll need for the next voyage. The shopping list is radioed to Southampton so that everything will be ready. The QE must provide for 50,000 meals in five days. Quite a family. Key to ship conveyors get to work as soon as the ship's alongside. After 2,000 pounds of biscuits comes sack after sack of sugar, 14,000 pounds of it. And then 2,000 pounds of jam. The 12 bars aboard have to be able to serve any drink at any time, and there's no going round the corner to the off license for extra supplies. This cellar has nearly 300 different brands, from champagne to mineral water. The bakery works round the clock, at sea and in harbour, turning out 12,000 rolls a day and 14 different varieties of bread. Across the alleyway, pastry cooks and confectioners produce anything passengers care to ask for, from the ornate and colourful to the lightest souffle. And there's no extra charge. Fresh vegetables are devoured at the rate of 82,000 pounds a voyage. And no one on board seems to worry about slimming. 100,000 pounds of potatoes go somewhere. The demand for fresh fruit, especially among British passengers, has been on the increase ever since the QE's first peacetime Atlantic crossing in 1946. Today, she takes 60,000 pounds, which works out at 20 pounds per person for five days. Refrigeration lorries line up on the quay to unload. York hams, 4,000 pounds of them go aboard. One hundred thousand pounds of fresh meat, half of it beef, is taken on and inspected for quality. Steaks, steaks and more steaks are the favourites with American passengers, especially for breakfast, when they're often ordered with waffles, pork sausages and maple ice cream. Yes, for breakfast. Fish, 35,000 pounds of it arrives. It's on the menu for every meal. And here come the aristocrats of the shellfish world. Crabs and lobsters have been kept in seawater tanks at Southampton just to make somebody's lunch or dinner. They are live. Two sets of linen, one in use and the other at the laundry, isn't good enough for a ship like this. The QE has to have everything in triplicate. 100,000 pieces in use, 100,000 being laundered in New York, 
Another 100,000 in Southampton. I'd hate to pay that laundry bill. There are 11 pianos and an electric organ to be tuned. hundred electric clocks, 680 telephones, and 30,000 light bulbs to be checked. Nothing must be amiss in this thousand-odd fleet of ship when she sails. The departure is in sight as the mail for America is swung aboard. 4,000 bags of it. Six kitchens, one preparing only kosher food, start on lunch for the first day at sea. 500 men are employed in preparing, cooking and serving food and drink in the four main restaurants. Mmm, that looks good. 12,000 turkeys are gobbled up on every trip. Now here's the cold buffet, a score of masterpieces in food. Oh, and that swan who's frozen stiff isn't just for show. He's to keep the caviar cool. There are more than 70 dishes on the menu. It's being printed on board as the boat trains from London arrive at the ocean terminal two hours before sailing time. Above decks, last-minute details are being checked. The crew muster for lifeboat drill and test the lowering gear of the 24 lifeboats. The cold buffet is laid out now, and as the passengers come aboard, they get visible proof that they won't go hungry for the next few days. The captain, 63-year-old Commodore George Morris makes for the bridge, and the great moment of every voyage has come, the order to cast off. Under her own 160,000 horsepower engines, but guided by tugs, the Queen Elizabeth backs out of her berth. The channel is narrow for her 39-foot draft, and she must be turned, her bow pointing seaward, a maneuver which takes no more than 15 minutes. Her sirens say farewell to Southampton for another two weeks. Sirens which, incidentally, can be heard ten miles away. Smoothly and without any fuss, the largest luxury liner in the world has completed another turnaround. And with all her shopping done, sails dead on time. 